recording. Cool. Um, let's just dump, jump right into it. First off, congratulations. What a cool thing. Thank you. Are you <laughs> pretty excited? Days. Yeah, I think we're all really excited. I, we've been excited within the Astronaut Corps for a while about Artemis. And it really feels like a good time to share that exi excitement with the public. Uh -huh. We're doing a lot of really awesome work to prepare to return to the moon. Um, and it's a really good time to be a NASA, that's for sure. Yeah. And let's talk about your background a bit. You're, I think you're originally like born in Idaho, but from the Tri-Cities, the Richland area? Yeah, I moved a lot as a kid growing up. So I was born in Idaho. I lived in Montana and Colorado but I went through high school in Richland, Washington, and my parents still live there. My sisters live in the Seattle area, so the Tri-Cities feels like my hometown, even though I bounced around a bit as a kid. Okay. Randomly, like, I, I worked in Great Falls, Montana, in Colorado Springs, and then I'm here in Spokane, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> following okay. each other around. Yeah, you're, you're a Richland bomber then, right? I played football with some yep. Richland bombers in college. <laughs> oh. Yep. Exactly. Um, hey, I, I, uh, I'm no expert in terms of, of, of NASA and astronauts, but if I'm correct, the last American to land on the moon or step on the moon was back in 1972. Is that correct? That's right. I mean, so potentially in 2024, 52 years later, I mean, that's pretty wild. Yeah, it is crazy. You know, the 50th anniversary of Apollo was pretty exciting for us because a lot of the Apollo astronauts came back to Johnson Space Center for events and stuff and took the chance to talk to a lot of us in the astronaut corps. And I think hearing their stories as we were in the first stages of getting the Artemis program underway just underscored how <laughs> incredible that experience might be if we pull this off. You know, it really feels like a once in a generation opportunity to do something new, push the boundaries of what we thought was possible before in space exploration. Um, so I think hearing their stories and kind of holding on to those moments that they shared with us from walking on the moon or orbiting the moon, it just, it's super exciting to think that we could return and return to stay, you know, have sustainable bases on the moon and really learn the things that we're going to need to know to go on to Mars. So it's, it's exciting for sure. I'm sure you'll get this question a lot in the coming years as, as we lead up to the mission. Uh, what's it mean for you personally to potentially be among the first women to ever step on the moon? You know, I think it's really exciting, you know, that we all grew up looking up to the Apollo astronauts and all that they accomplished, but they were chosen from a pretty small slice of America in the world. You know, they're men, fighter pilots, military officers, and the astronaut corps today reflects the amazing diversity our country has to offer in so many ways, you know, gender, racial, ethnicity, educational backgrounds, interests. And I think there's something beautiful about that. It shows how far our society has come. And I think, you know, the Apollo astronauts would be the first to say how proud they would be to see a woman walk on the moon um, and all of those firsts that we'll see in the program. So it's super exciting. Yeah, very cool. Kayla, your screen is frozen for, I can hear you perfectly, but like uh -oh. your, the image of you is just frozen. <laughs> Maybe internet challenges. I know, geez, 2020. Well, um, I, I think we'll, I'll just continue on if you don't mind. And, okay, yeah, uh, maybe it'll come back. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. Um, but I wonder like kind of what, do you have like a kind of maybe a, a message to, um, to the young girls out there, particularly in the state of Washington and in Eastern Washington, um, you know, they'll now have another woman astronaut to look up to, to say, I'm gonna do that one day. Yeah, you know, I think I would tell them that they should keep dreaming big. You know, they have another good role model from Eastern Washington and Anne McLean, you know, and she always says, be impractical about your dreams, but practical about your path. Um, and I would totally agree with that. You know, I think for me, I, I didn't grow up convinced I was going to be an astronaut or even having that as any sort of specific goal in my mind. But for me, I just always tried to find opportunities that were both challenging and fun, things that I was passionate about, but that would push me to improve. Um, and I was always in search of the best teams I could be a part of, you know, the other people around me who would really 
hold me accountable, teach me new things, um, really that I could walk alongside in a lot of those challenging environments. Um, and so I think I would just tell them to, yeah, dream big and work hard. That's, yeah. <laughs> that'll get you where you want to go most of the time. For sure. Um, who's a better astronaut, you or Ann? <laughs> oh man, Ann for sure. I mean, Ann is a great role model for everybody in our class, you know, she is um, from the class that came right before us, the 2013 class, and I think showing up as the 2017 class, they were amazing mentors for us. And when we first got here, none of them had flown in space. And now, you know, the 2013 class, a lot of them have been to the space station. They have so many spacewalks under their belts. Um, and they've really invested in bringing us along with them, you know, from the class behind. So, um, I definitely look up to Anne. I would say she's the better astronaut for sure. <laughs> um, there are uh, eight, 18 of you guys for the Artemis team. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. And so, um, gosh, I know we're kind of getting the cart ahead of the horse, but I don't really know a whole lot about this, but you'll go up in separate missions or how will that work? So the Artemis team is kind of just a cadre, a group of astronauts who are dedicated to pushing the goals of the astronaut or the Artemis program forward. Um, mission assignments will come a little bit later. It usually they'll be about two years before the specific flight. Um, so the Artemis two announcements could happen in the next year or two, and that'll be really exciting. Uh, but in the meantime, I think we're all focused on what we can do to prepare ourselves for those future missions and also to help support the agency as we're developing hardware and training and spacesuits and all the operational plans. Um, so it's, it's definitely exciting group to be a part of. Um, and the larger NASA team is definitely focused on this too. I'm going to, one second, because I'm going to try to like uh, turn your video off and then turn it back on to see if it unfreezes okay. your mind. Okay. I can try cycling it too. Okay. see here. Is it back on? Oh, uh, it's black. Just black screen now. <laughs> the joys of uh, Zoom. Yeah, I'm sharing bandwidth with another teleworker, so that might be part of the problem too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop video again and then I'll retry here. Okay. Ask to start video. There we go. Any better? No, I don't see you at all. It's just kind of a black screen on my end. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, it's not just what, what we got here. Um, Well, I guess I'll just continue and at least I'll have your voice. <laughs> hey, Mark, it's Rachel. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yeah. Oh, cool. cool. We just got a couple minutes left. Just wanted you to oh, know okay. about that. Appreciate cool. it. Appreciate it. Appreciate uh, it. Kayla, quickly, what's um, what will be kind of your, I don't know if this is the right term, but the area of expertise that you'll bring to the mission? That's a good question. Lately, I've been working a little bit on the spacesuit design for the Artemis program. Um, so I was our office's liaison to the teams who are developing the launch reentry suit for Orion and also the exploration EMU or XEMU. Um, so that's been one of my passion projects is kind of how, how are we developing the suit? How will it work? How does it interface with the tools we might use? And what are its capabilities on spacewalks? Um, but I think just based on my background in the submarine community um, and hopefully eventual experience on space flights, um, I'm definitely, that pairs well with my passion for hopefully doing spacewalks and moonwalks in the future. Very cool. Uh, obviously it's super exciting. I mean, I, I, but if you think about kind of strapping yourself to a rocket and going to the moon, it's also Kind of crazy. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Just just undergoing this whole thing. Yeah, you know, I it does seem kind of crazy. It's kind of funny talking to my family, seeing which of them would be interested in taking one of those rides because um, it's split. A few, you know, my dad would go, but my mom wouldn't. I don't think. Um, I it does seem a little crazy, but I think um, it just 
is such a unique opportunity, such an experience to go with your friends and teammates to a really strange environment um, and try to accomplish something great for science and for NASA. Um, I think we're driven by the mission and we're all explorers, you know, we're people who grew up hiking and rock climbing and working in the field. And um, I think for us that draw into the unknown is kind of what helps you overcome the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. And uh, I know we're short on time here. Uh, how long will it take, I mean, roughly to get to the moon and to get back? You know, it only takes a couple of days. Um, you can get there pretty quick and we'll also, um, it just depends on the mission, but early on we'll go and orbit the moon and then send a lander down from orbit. So those missions could be, you know, on the order of weeks, but eventually we want to have a sustainable presence on the surface. So we want to build habitats and send people to live on the surface of the moon. Um, so the journey's not that far, but hopefully the mission length will increase as we improve um, our technology over time. Gotcha. Last question. Any kind of like uh, words of wisdom or encouragement for, for the people here in Eastern Washington, the kids looking up to what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a challenging time for our nation and for the world. Um, and I think for us, what really keeps us going is our relationships with each other. You know, just investing in your community and the people around you and trying to find ways to connect, even though we can't really be in, in person right now. Um, but I would just say hang in there and there's awesome things on the horizon for all of us. Great. Kayla, thank you for your time. I don't know if Rachel can hear me. Rachel, thank you for facilitating this. And um, yeah, I guess good luck and I'm looking forward to perhaps talking with you in the future. Awesome. Thanks. Sorry about the video. Oh, it's okay. At least we had your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kayla. Thank you, Rachel. Have a good day. You bet. Right. Bye.